Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Primrez ZJ Bima. I post content about academics, career, and adulting. This is the second episode in my postgraduate masterclass series. The first episode focused on what you need to consider as you think about pursuing your postgraduate journey, that is either honors, masters, or PhD studies. And in today's episode, I'm going to speak to you about how to determine your research focus. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you've not done so yet. You're always welcome to share my content. I hope that this is one that resonates with you or one that enriches you and you find it insightful. So your postgraduate journey is largely defined by you doing research, which is, of course, the reason why I have this episode on thinking about your research focus. I think that the main issue is you need to determine your research focus ideally based on interests. You're going to spend a lot of time on this topic. You're going to spend a lot of time doing research and you're also going to be investing money in these studies, even if you're being sponsored, right? You could otherwise use the funds for something else. So think about the ideas that come into your mind based on your interests. Your interests are usually linked to the discipline that you're in. So for example, doing political studies, gender studies, or if you're doing a master's in public health, of course your topic will be determined by your interest in those areas. Your interests have to be relevant. So your interests could be based on lived experience, could be based on what you have watched, content that you've gathered from what you have heard. It could also come out of what you discussed in class or discussions with potential supervisors and other people in your field. What you need to make sure that these interests allow for you to delve into research that helps you to answer critical questions. So number two, after thinking about your interests, number two is therefore the significance of these interests or these topics that you're thinking about. Because whatever you do research on needs to add on not only to existing knowledge by you you know, adding on to information on a particular topic or on a particular study. But ideally, you should be filling a gap. Sometimes people argue that there's very little gaps to be filled. Sometimes people argue that some studies are merely replications of what is already there. But I think there's always something different that comes with every research studies. So from the get-go, you should actually think about the significance of your study to the field as well as to the topic that you are going to be looking at. Oftentimes, some studies are linked to recommending policy approaches. Some studies are linked to developing formulas or improving on them. Some studies are linked to treatment, for example, when we're looking at public health, how things can be improved in terms of access and in terms of the ways in which things are done. Research in tech, for example, also involves developing new models or helping to advance the technology that is already existent, as well as actually finding answers to issues that have no known solutions yet. So make sure that whatever ideas or interests you're looking at also have some form of significance in terms of further developments within the world. Now, also still speaking about significance and adding to existing knowledge, sometimes you may be doing research that promotes awareness or advocacy on a particular issue. And I'm familiar with this, particularly within the field of gender justice, because there's so many issues that are under research, so many lived experiences that have never been captured, so many voices that have never brought to the forefront, because people that were doing research in the past were focusing on their own race, on their own gender related issues. And through that, you know, there's a lot of sidelining, a lot of invisibilization, as well as a lot of silencing on some issues. So that could also be a motivation, advocacy, as well as awareness, because that too is very significant. So the third one is think about your access to discipline specific resources, in particular those that relate to your topic. Of course, your needs may vary depending on your funding, depending on the university where you are stationed, depending on the supervisor that you have, depending, of course, on the research support services in terms of even human format you know you could have postdoctoral foilers you could have lecturers and other people that can help you research assistants and so forth and sometimes you may not have that it may just be you it may just be you and your supervisor um, and different other dynamics now when we speak about facilities some people need access to computer labs some people need access to software some people need access to real labs where they can do experiments sometimes you may have been 
be thinking about access to ethnographic spaces, to specific centers, to specific ministries or institutions, to specific people that will give you particular information, to specific archives where you can get certain resources. And I think that sometimes people think about these resources at a very late stage when you have already, you know, set up your research focus and you've got this rich proposal that you've presented to a department and then you get stuck when you can't get ethical clearance or when you can't actually get access to potential participants. So I personally believe that these are issues you need to iron out, at least in the very early stages. When you've thought about the program you want to apply for, when you've applied for it, and when you're thinking about how you're going to approach your research studies. All right, so also thinking about that, you may also want to think about different study spaces depending on what your home environment looks like. You may also want to think about the accommodation and where you need to be located at different times and how you're going to be funding that. Of course, food also comes into the question because you need to be well nourished. So just make sure that your budget is on point and it's in line with a particular project or research timeline that will help you to finish your studies. I had to finish a master's by research as well as coursework in one year because I didn't have the funds to go beyond. So I had to make sure that the research methods that I chose allowed me to actually pursue my master's by research as well as coursework within that one particular year. If you've got more time, you can, of course, do more with the resources that you have, do more with the time, do more with the money. So... In addition to the discipline-specific resources, I think you need to make sure that you know where you're at in terms of, of skills and strengths. What do I mean by skills and strengths? You're going to choose whether you're going to do qualitative, quantitative, or mixed methods research. Where you at in terms of your skills in being able to collect data in a particular way? Where are you at in terms of your ability to analyze certain sets of data? Are you going to get research assistance? And how well acquainted is your supervisor with the data collection methods as well as the analysis um, approaches that you're going to take? Because that is going to count as they're going to be the first person to read your work before it goes out for external examination. So make sure that those strengths and weaknesses are also not just your own, but also linked to your supervisor and where there is a need to actually bring in a third party to explain or to assist that you and the supervisors also agree on that. Now my parting note today is to say that have a main research question. Of course research questions change but try as early as you can to determine your research focus and interest based on a particular question because when you have interest you've got so many ideas and when you want to refine your focus in terms of, for example, determining these discipline-specific resources you need or your data collection methods and whatnot, you need, of course, to know what your question is. So, for example, if I want to do a study on what explains the Southern African Development Community's peacemaking efficacy, I already have to make sure that I'm going to have the relevant resources in terms of a literature on the Southern African Development Community, that SADC, in terms of literature on peacemaking, in terms of literature on regional integration, in terms of literature and resources on relevant theories to peacemaking and concepts linked to that as well. Um, so I also have to make sure that I'm aware of different case studies that I may want to look at depending on where I am located and also depending on the types of interviewees I may have access to during the course of the study. All of these are things that need to be ironed out. And also to think about in terms of my access to various institutions, maybe I want to get key informants from different uh, governments and ministries and whatnot. How long will it take me to get to speak to those people? Am I already exposed to people in that realm such that it's going to be easy to speak to them? So make sure that you iron out these issues. If you've got a research question that is, for example, linked to public health, make sure you're aware of the implications of the study that you're proposing. Make sure that you're going to have access to the ethical clearance you need within a specific amount of time. Speak to experts in the field of, or look at studies that of the same area and see how much time people took to actually get to a particular stage. So at this stage, you may want to look at someone's thesis. You may want to speak to people that have already done their postgraduate studies, people that are currently doing their postgraduate studies, as well as stuff within your department or faculty. So to wrap up what I've discussed today is number one, think about your ideas and interests, depending on what you've been exposed to or what makes you think further about a particular topic or issue. Number two, what is the significance, for example, in terms of policy approaches, in terms of 
helping in terms of developments of treatments or in terms of technological advancements or in terms of advancing particular political points through advocacy as well as raising awareness, right? Because this is still significant for society and promoting change. And then the third one is do you have the discipline-specific resources or the study-specific resources to undertake the study? The fourth one is what are your skills and strengths and think about how you're going to upgrade them and improve on what needs to be done or whether you're going to choose one over another because of what you are capable of doing. And of course, the fifth one is define your research question. It may change, but at least have one that you will be able to tap into as you move further. So of course, the next episode will be about rethinking and redesigning your study and also developing research questions and in that episode i'll cover main research questions as well as subsidiary research questions thank you for watching until the end i'll see you in the next one bye